Today on the workbench we have the chassis out of a 5 tube Emerson battery operated portable radio from around 1939 or so. This set requires one and a half volts for the filament and 90 volts for the uh, plate voltage or B plus voltage whatever you want to call it. And here's the cabinet for the radio. This is one of those cloth covered portables and the cabinet is in unbelievably good condition to be as old as it is. In fact, most of these portable radios that you find in this type of cabinet are usually usually trashed by now and there's not a whole lot you can do about the cabinet once that covering gets ruined. Okay, I've done nothing to this radio except connect it to my uh, power supply that I built from a kit from Antique Electronic Supply. We have our filament supply adjusted to 1.5 volts and our B plus connected to the 90 volt tap. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm hearing noises in the speaker. It's a good sign. Our dial string is broken, so I'm going to have to tune this manually. And I'm getting no reception. Okay, the first test is to determine if our local oscillator inside of the radio is working. And a down and dirty way to do that is to tune a little transistor AM radio to around 700 kilocycle mark. Place it right up next to the chassis under test and tune across the across the broadcast band and you should there should, you should find a point where you can hear some activity in the transistor radio and that and that goal has been achieved So that tells me that the local oscillator in this chassis is working. Okay, I have our signal generator connected to the grid of the mixer tube. And we're passing a signal, although the alignment is way off. Well, not way, way off, but way off enough that it needs to be aligned. Here we are on 455 kilocycles. However, peak alignment is not obtained until around 470 kilocycles. So these, these IF tremors are way off, so let's get those back down to 455 where they should be. Okay, I adjusted the tremors on these IF transformers and got our alignment back down to around 455 kilocycles. Not perfect, but just a quick rough alignment for troubleshooting purposes. Okay, I'm now checking the voltage on the third grid of the 1A7 tube, which this grid is also tied to grid number 5. Reading about 42 volts there, which I don't have a schematic to this radio in front of me, but that seems, oh, probably a little bit on the low side. Uh, we have a 20,000 ohm resistor between this grid and the uh, B plus and that resistor reads 30,000 ohms and I even though that's out of tolerance I don't think it's out of tolerance enough to be causing the problem we're having here however this capacitor right here connects from one side of the G3 pin to ground it's quite possible this capacitor is leaky enough to be choking some voltage to ground so Let's just clip this capacitor out of circuit and see if the voltage comes up. Okay, eliminating that capacitor brought our voltage up to the third grid pin, about a volt, which is really not enough to amount to anything. However, I can tell that this capacitor is substantially leaky because on the other side of the capacitor that's disconnected, we have about 13 volts on one side of it. And on the other side, we have... 43.5 volts. 
And in my electronics courses, I was taught that a good capacitor blocks DC. Well, this one's not blocking DC very well, so even though it doesn't appear to be our problem, we might as well go ahead and replace it. Okay, here's the new capacitor, and before I solder the other end to ground, I'd like to demonstrate a point about what I said about these blocking DC. Look at that. No DC voltage whatsoever. And what were we what were we reading with the other capacitor? About 14 volts. Well, we have the capacitor in the front end replaced, but now the audio circuit has decided to take a dump. We're not getting any signal passage through the audio stages. I can hear a slight hum in the speaker, but that's it. So now we'll check some voltages on the plate of the preamp stage or driver stage. We have 50 volts. It's probably about right. On the screen grid of the output tube we have about 86. On the plate have about eight have about the same voltage there. On the control grid of the output tube we have about 3.2 volts which seems to be excessive which probably means this capacitor is severely leaky. However, I don't think that would kill the audio altogether. And I actually get the same voltages with the output tube unplugged, so I'm starting to think this output tube is taking a dump on us. Let's test it on the tube tester and see what we get. Well, fortunately, the tube seems to be good, because I don't think I have one of these anyway, so I'm glad it is good. Well, now the audio section has decided to start working again, so apparently something is intermittent. However, we still have no front end action. So back to trying to figure out what's going on there. Okay, I just went and printed out a schematic on this radio. And upon checking voltages a little bit closer on this uh, 1A7 tube, it appears we have no plate voltage here. Now that's very strange, seeing as how I was able to pass an IF signal through this stage, but yet there's no plate voltage there. However, we have plate voltage on the other side of the primary winding of the first IF transformer, but nothing coming out. So that tells me, unfortunately, that this IF transformer winding is open. And whether I can repair that, that's anybody's guess. We just have to take the transformer apart and see if it's something that can be repaired. I'm checking the plate voltage now, and as you can see on the meter, I'm really not getting anything worthwhile. About negative 1.6. There ought to be about 80 volts there. However, when I check the input, B plus input going into the transformer, which is this red lead, Look at that, about 84 volts. So, yep, looks like we have a bad IF transformer. Okay, I just snipped the wires on the IF transformer. This old rubber insulation is brittle and flaking, so that's going to have to be rewired anyway. And in addition to these clips that hold the transformer to the chassis, look at there, they even have it soldered to the chassis. I think they're just trying to make things difficult here. Here's the IF transformer removed from the chassis. Now let's put it under the magnifier and see if I can detect any defects that can be repaired. Well, unfortunately, the defect that this IF transformer suffers from is embedded somewhere in the coil. It's not anything to do with where the lead solders onto these terminals, which I've seen the leads break where they solder on here. But like I said, unfortunately, that's not the case with this one. But fortunately, we have enough junk over here that we should be able to find an IF transformer somewhere that will get the job done. Okay, back on the Emerson portable radio. I found an old IF transformer out of a newer printed circuit board style tube radio, and I have that hacked into this radio chassis for testing purposes. 
Uh, yes, on my videos you can see the proper way to fix something and you can see the hacked up way to fix something. Although, of course, this is not going to be a permanent repair, of course. However, the radio now plays, but the volume is so weak that it's basically just a whisper. As you can hear. Now, we know the audio circuit is stout because when I touch the input grid of the uh, audio driver to you, we get a nice buzz. So let's pull a signal generator back out and inject a 455 kilohertz signal into the mixer of the, into the grid of the mixer tube and see if that see what kind of results we get from that. Okay, I injected a IF signal into the grid of the mixer tube and got not very satisfactory results. And then I moved the signal generator over to the grid of the IF amplifier tube. And our results are still not that great. So let's, let's take some voltage measurements in the IF stage and see what we can come up with. Okay, we're still battling our weak gain problem here. However, I did repair the audio output stage. You might recall earlier in this video that we checked the grid voltage on the audio output tube and we were reading a positive voltage, around 3 volts I think. Well, that was due to a leaky coupling capacitor which I went ahead and replaced. I also went ahead and replaced this uh, plate bypass capacitor, aka the tone capacitor. Now let's check this grid voltage and see what we have. Ah, oh, that's good. Zero volts. That's a lot better than the positive voltage which we had, which causes audio distortion and also causes the tube to which causes the tube to be overdriven, which in turn causes the stage to draw more current which can load down the power supply and all sorts of problems. Got a little bit cleaner buzz on the audio now. Now back to the IF problem or the mixer problem wherever the whatever the case may be. Okay back on the radio it still has a gain problem. Uh, I substituted another IF transformer which helped a tad bit but not really enough to say anything. So next we're going to fire up the old signal tracer and trace this out stage by stage and see if we can determine where the trouble is. First I'm going to test at the input grid of the first IF amplifier T. And we've got a little something there. Now we'll move to the input grid of the second IF amplifier tube. Okay, at the second IF tube, we have a very stout signal. So it appears that everything is good up to this point. Okay, so our signal is good here at the input grid of the second IF tube. Now let's check the output of the second IF stage. Okay, let's cut to the chase and test the output of the second IF transformer which goes into the plate of the 1H5, that's the, the, the uh, detector tube. Okay, now checking pin 5. Well, it would help if I'd hook the ground. Oh yeah, we got quite a stout signal here. Okay, since we have such a stout signal going into the detector stage, and since we know the audio stage is working, the problem has to be right in here somewhere in this detector stage. And I've already substituted the tube, and that's not the trouble. And since we're running out of time for this video, we'll pick this up in part two. Okay, thanks for watching, and part two should be along shortly.